Welcome to the second of this series of slideshows that explain the mammalian stress mechanism that was postulated by Hans Selye. This slideshow will introduce the stress mechanism and its three products. The mammalian stress mechanism is the veritable elephant in the living room of medicine. I call it the MSM for short. It is, a is, it is the homeostatic, self-limiting, physiological mechanism that continuously maintains and repairs tissues and regulates hemodynamic physiology in mammals. It optimizes internal cellular environment and maintains complex multicellular structures. It is essential for life. It is activated by combinations of tissue disruption and nervous sensation and its hyperactivity causes the symptoms and manifestations of disease. Understanding its activity is pertinent to all medical specialties. One might regard this simplified diagram of the MSM as an updated version of the familiar coagulation cascade that incorporates fresh research information generated by unrelated research during the past 30 years since Selya's theory was abandoned. As Celia anticipated, the, the MSM is a single cohesive mechanism that simultaneously regulates tissue repair and hemodynamic physiology to optimize cellular circumstances and maintain structural integrity. However, it is easier to comprehend as two semi-independent subcomponents. The extravascular tissue repair component, shown in blue, corresponds to the extrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade. The intravascular capillary gate component, shown in red, corresponds to the intrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade. The tissue repair component governs factor 7 activity to regulate tissue repair in accord with tissue disruption, and the capillary gate component governs factor 8 activity to regulate hemodynamic physiology in accord with autonomic balance. The activity of each subcomponent exaggerates that of the other to produce positive feedback that quickly focuses the mechanism on the site of tissue damage and facilitates repair. The easiest way to introduce the MSM is by exploring its end products. These are thrombin, soluble fibrin, and insoluble fibrin. The enzymatic interaction of bloodborne hepatic factors 7, 8, 9, and 10 generates and regulates all three products. Depending on circumstances, each product produces a variety of symptoms and manifestations. This explains how the MSM produces a bewildering blizzard of fluctuating effects that have confused researchers in the past. We will return to this diagram to explain how the mechanism works. Fibrinogen, soluble fibrin, and insoluble fibrin are closely related and chemically similar so that they were persistently confused with one another during the era of stress research. The liver continuously releases fibrinogen into flowing blood. It is a structurally complex protein molecule that exists in multiple forms. It is the precursor of soluble fibrin. It cannot escape the intact Vas vasculature. It consists of alpha, beta, and gamma subunits that are connected by disulfide bonds. Thrombin disrupts the disulfide bonds and causes the alpha, beta, and gamma fibrinogen subunits to rearrange themselves into fibrillar, or that is, two-dimensional, strands of soluble fibrin that might be likened to strands of spaghetti. These strands of soluble fibrin can escape through thrombin-induced inflammatory gaps in capillary walls and interdamaged tissues, where they create a lattice or matrix of fibers that facilitates the cellular activities of tissue repair. I call soluble fibrin the universal protein of tissue repair. It is so ubiquitous as to escape notice. It appears in saliva and mother's milk. It is a substance of pulmonary exudates, nasal discharge, pus, scabs, peritoneal deposits that appear after surgery, and the mucus that enables everything from digestion to defecation to respiratory tract cleansing to sex. 
It becomes dangerous when it is produced in excessive quantities by MSM hyperactivity. It escapes from blood through inflamed capillary walls, invades tissues, and causes tissue edema and organ disruption. It floods the lungs with exudates that disrupt gas exchange in ARDS, pneumonia, asthma, and influenza. In multi-organ failure syndrome, it causes a mental disturbance, liver swelling, and acute renal failure accompanied by hyaline cast formation. In eclampsia, which is analogous to multi-organ failure syndrome, it coats the placenta, disrupts oxygen exchange, and suffocates the fetus. In disseminated intravascular coagulation, it coats the inner walls of arteries and causes characteristic rosette formations by attaching to clumps of defective insoluble fibrin clots. In tuberculosis, soluble fibrin deposits form caseating t lesions that frustrate antibiotic treatment. Soluble fibrin promotes collagen production, causing pulmonary fibrosis in the aftermath of lung disease and peritoneal adhesions after abdominal surgery. I call insoluble fibrin the universal polymer of hemostasis. Nervous activity accelerates factor VIII activity that converts two-dimensional soluble fibrin to three-dimensional insoluble fibrin monomers that spontaneously polymerize into strands that reduce capillary flow, increase blood viscosity and coagulability, impair cardiac efficiency, predispose to infarction, and entangle platelets and red cells into clots. Unlike a fibrin, insoluble fibrin cannot escape the intact vascular system and it is susceptible to anticoagulants. The insoluble fibrin molecule incorporates plasminogen, which spontaneously disintegrates into plasmin that disintegrates the clot unless it is continuously stabilized by thrombin. Thrombin is the most important of the three MSM products. I call thrombin the universal enzyme of extracellular enzyme transduction. As gasoline energizes automobile motion, ATP energizes cells and extracellular enzymes. As automobile engines convert gasoline into motion, thrombin converts ATP into cell and extracellular enzyme activity. As the throttle regulates engine power output, parathyroid glands regulate extracellular calcium within a narrow range to optimize thrombin activity, which explains why they are vital to life. Protease activated receptors, or PAR, were unknown in the era of stress research. PAR are thrombin receptors. All cells have PAR on their surface. At least four types of PAR have been discovered thus far. These are known as PAR1, PAR2, PAR3, and PAR4. Individual cell types are characterized by PAR types and numbers that, determines, that determine how the cells react to thrombin elevations. Thrombin, ATP, and calcium are essential for extracellular enzyme activities, including the complement cascade, the coagulation cascade, and gel solin, which digests actin. This prevents actin from becoming entangled with insoluble fibrin and disrupting clot formation. Thrombin energizes the conversion of fibrinogen to soluble fibrin, which facilitates tissue repair and the subsequent conversion of soluble fibrin to insoluble fibrin, which enables hemostasis and the regulation of blood flow in tissues and organs. Thrombin also stabilizes insoluble fibrin by energizing thrombin-activated fibrinolysis inhibitor. This more complete MSM diagram shows thrombin pathways in orange. The MSM continuously generates small amounts of thrombin in all tissues to energize tissue maintenance. In the event of injury, it accelerates thrombin generation to energize coagulation. It then regulates 
elevated thrombin levels within a narrow range to optimize tissue repair and prevent cellular hyperactivity that causes malignancy. As tissue repair nears completion, it reduces thrombin generation to maintenance levels. The resulting starvation induces apoptosis and clot disintegration, which facilitates resolution of the repair process. That is enough castor oil for one slideshow. The next slideshow will explain how the elegant enzymatic interaction of factors 7, 8, 9, and 10 generates and regulates thrombin, soluble fibrin, and insoluble fibrin. Thanks for listening.